I'm going to go out on a limb and say this was the high point of the Grammys evening. One of them. I know there was a lot of them when we break them down, JJ, and we've talked about them on and off all day, but the Tracy Chapman, Luke Combs mashup of Fast Car, so good. And the fact that he just stood there and sang, yeah. and Tracy Chapman was the one that played guitar, I mean, it was so thoughtful. It was so loving to her and to him. It was just such a, I don't know. That was one of the top moments for me. In big news, Apple has announced that what's number one on iTunes right now, like with a bullet, her version of Fast Car. I love that. Yeah. And I would and I would think, like, I don't down deep in my soul, I'd like to think that Luke Combs also loves that. Yeah, oh, I think he probably right? does. I, I mean, there's a reason why he didn't really veer from the original version. He wanted to keep it true to what it was. It was perfect in what it was. And I think that that's such a tribute to her. Okay, let's talk to Melissa. Melissa's on the line with us. Melissa Ruggieri, did I say it right? I, <laughs> you did. You when did. <laughs> I look at your name, it freaks me out so much. <laughs> so many vowels, I know. It's okay. <laughs> it is scary. It's like one of the scariest names to look at. Like, we're in Scandinavian country. You got to give me, like, a yeah, Johnson or a Nelson a, a or a... KJ with, yeah. like, a W, like, no sweat no for sweat. us. No sweat. Sure, yeah. I got you. But Ruggieri... Freaks me out. National music writer USA Today joins us to talk all about Grammys. Okay, my high, one of my high points has to be the fast car. What are yours? Well, that was definitely up there for me. And to be perfectly honest, I was never a huge fan of that song back in the day. But when Luke brought it back, I started to like it again because you know you hadn't heard it every five minutes like you used to. And then seeing them last night, though, like as you were just saying. It really was this magical moment. It was sort of the worst kept secret that they were going to be performing it together. So it wasn't like, oh, my God, Tracy Chapman's there. But the fact, like you said, that Luke was so respectful to her and just a little prepackage that they showed before the performance of what that song meant to him. And then now to have Tracy stand on stage next to him, just so understated and found she sounded fantastic. Yeah. And it was it really was just a sweet moment, I think. And it also showed sort of the cyclical nature torch passing aspect of the music industry that sometimes you know we forget about and i think for me the other high point or, or perhaps my high point was Joni mitchell doing yes. both sides now yes. with brandy and you know brandy carlisle has been such an amazing steward of Joni's career and i actually just found out this week i i'm fortunate enough that i usually get to sit down with clive davis for a little bit every year when i'm out here and he and i were talking on friday and he said well you know the reason that Joni even you know, met Brandy is from my my party, my pre Grammy gala that several years ago Brandy asked to be seated at Joni's table and said, you know, Clive, it'd be the honor of my life. And he said, All right, I'll put you together. And that was it. I mean, they became best friends that night. <laughs> and now we've seen just the production, you know, the the resurgence of Joni's career that's thanks so much to Brandy. So I thought that was also a really special moment. Yeah, too. I agree one hundred percent. And you're right, you know, there's so much sampling that goes on in music. And it, it, you know, it's at the it's at the top of the list when it comes to lawsuits and and all of this headline mm -hmm. things when it comes to music. But when there are intergenerational artists that decide to get together and really just honor what their individuality and who they are and building each other up, that's pretty powerful stuff in music. You know, I think of um, Tony Bennett and. Um, Lady, Lady Gaga, Gaga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? These intergenerational mashups are mm -hmm. just, I mean, they, they can, they can kind of sweep the whole music industry. It's like, we love to see how sampling is getting in the news for all of this, all of these lawsuits like, and everything. But there are these other stories that are prominent. There are. And, you know, I was honestly hoping for a, a, maybe some Olivia Rodrigo with Billy Joel yeah. <laughs> during the show since she performed with him at Madison Square Garden last year, since she name checks Uptown Girl in one of her songs. And, you know, they, they become buddies. And I thought, well, that would actually have been a cute thing. But but maybe not as organic, you know, like what you're just saying, like, you know, the, the Luke and Tracy and Joni and Brandy. I mean, those are things that just happened you know, because uh, of their relationship or because of the song, not just because, hey, here's a young person and a veteran and let's put them together, which the Grammys were very famous for for many years when Ken Ehrlich was a producer, which he was for decades until maybe about three or four years ago. He would go out of his way to sort of do these pairings, these iconic pairings. And 
they were great for the most part, but every now and then you kind of cringe like, mm, I don't know, did you really need to put Steven Tyler <laughs> with, you know, whoever the young hip hop star mm-hmm. was at the time? And and then it just felt forced. And I, I don't think any of, of this, what we saw last night, felt forced. But, but you know, there, there, it was a great night for women. Uh, I'll say that. I mean, you know, I don't want to use the, the tired, cool and the gang cliche that it was ladies night, but it kind of was. And I, I think that was something that was refreshing to see too, that, you know, all the, all the televised awards, all only women won. And when you look at these top four categories, all women <laughs> won. And, yeah. and most of the performances, I mean, there were maybe like three or four male performances and I'm not really counting Luke because Tracy was with him. So that cancels out, but there were, you know, probably I think nine of the performances were, were female dominated as well. So you know, it, it really was a great spotlight for a lot of young, you know, up and coming talent. And then you've got people like SZA and Victoria Monet and, you know, backstage, you know, Carol G from, from the Latin community. These are these are women who have been in the business for years. I mean, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years. These, sometimes, you know, for some of them, it was their third or fourth album. And they're just now getting recognized. So let's all cheer for that. At least. Yes, <laughs> that's, yes. That's, that's, that's finally happening. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. And Billie Eilish with her Barbie song. I think it, yes. there were a lot of people excited to see that. We just, we want to see some wins for Barbie, even at the Grammys. Yes, we do. And at the Oscars coming up too, I mean, be, between them. And, you know, some people thought that Billie might not win Song of the Year because, well, let's, you know, we're pretty sure that the song is going to win the Oscar because really of the, of the contenders, it's the strongest and the most well-known. But I, I was really happy to see that she did win because it's such a, a delicate song. And she came backstage with her brother Phineas and kind of just told that story again about how she had been in a really dark place. They had been writing and nothing was happening. And she kind of got panicky that maybe this was it. Maybe she wasn't able to write anymore. And then Greta Gerwig came to them and said, you know, w- would you would you be interested in doing a song? They saw a clip, you know, a, a cut of the movie, wrote the song the next day. And she said, and that really just kicked off this spurt of creativity for her and, and her brother. So, you know, and said, you know, she was actually shocked at how well received it was because it is a, it's a very, you know, melancholy song. It's a very mm-hmm. ruminative song. And, but I think that's what touched so many people about it. And she just, just delivered it beautifully uh, at the show as well. I thought that was just a really nice understated performance too. I'm going to be honest. I don't really know the story, but I have seen just the headlines and their grabbers about the killer Mike who won best rap album was also arrested when he got off stage yeah. this thing is it's very vague and we're still trying to figure out or learn more about what happened killer mike had come back to the press room he was so effusive i mean he was so excited with his three grammys he swept his categories they're the first grammys of his career and i used to live and work in atlanta so i actually know mike a bit from you know my years of talking to him there and I, you know and i was so happy for him and you know he's a very motivational kind of guy and was just talking about you know if you can if you think you can only jump 20 feet, you try and jump 40 feet, you know, things like that. And was just so proud of the accomplishment of, of, you know, winning those Grammys. And then, you know, an hour and a half later, we start seeing on social media that he's been arrested. And, you know, everybody's kind of going, wait, what? What the heck happened? And I, apparently there was some kind of altercation with a security guard at the arena. And it was a misdemeanor offense. And they did put him in handcuffs and, and walk him away. And, you know, it's just really ironic because he had just been backstage talking about, you know, just the, the whole the, the community and how everybody sometimes, you know, looks at negative things in the community and how he's always trying to bring positive things to the community. And then, you know, something like this happens. But I'm pretty sure we're going to be hearing from Mike sooner than later because I think he'd probably like to explain to people whatever the heck happened that night. <laughs> yeah. OK, so it, it was probably with an altercation that happened at. I think that was the confusing part. Like, is right. was it something that happened previous to the award show? Well, we had initially heard, yes, that it had nothing to do with anything at the yeah. Grammys. That, and then, you know, and then we were all saying, well, wait, did, was there like a warrant for his arrest? And they just ambushed him because they knew that he was going to be at the Grammys. But then later in the night, uh, a friend of mine who works for AP had talked to the LAPD PIO. And the only information he was able to get from them was that, there, there was an altercation with a security guard at the arena. So, yeah, I do think it was something that had happened prior, you know, you know post post wins, post sure. him visiting the press room, all that kind of stuff. And I, but I don't know the genesis of it or what's prompted this altercation or, or any of that. But, um, you know, like I said, Mike is Mike's a pretty outspoken guy, and uh, I think as soon as he's able to talk about it, he'll he'll tell everybody what what happened, and you know. Hopefully, I mean, he was released last night, so it it wasn't something, you know, that he's being detained for. 
I like was, uh, Melissa, I was surprised to see Meryl Streep there, but apparently <laughs> yeah. she has a history of being Grammy nominated for some of her vocal work. Um, well, she's also Mark Ronson's mother-in-law. <laughs> she is? What? She is. He's married to her daughter. Yeah, that they were sitting at the table together. Yeah. I have yeah, yeah, never yeah. put that together. <laughs> and I am, mind. yes, I have never put that together. And I am a Mark Ronson, like, super fan. I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> They've kind of kept that relationship a little quiet, but they were, you know, they were all at the table together last night. But yeah, that's why when they uh, uh, gave out the record of the year oh award together, gosh. she was teasing him, and then you know, I think she gave him a kiss on the head or, or something, was yes. kind of affectionate with him, and, and that kind of yeah. So they they have a they have a very close relationship, obviously. But yes, she also though JJ, as you were saying, I mean, she does have a lovely voice. I mean, we've heard her sing in movies over the years, and you know, she's done some audio books, I believe, and. Yeah, so, hey, who's ever going to say no to Meryl Streep wanting to, to no. show up? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. There you go. There's a little more Streep in our lives. <laughs> a little more Streep in our lives. Hey, if I can tell you guys something really funny really yeah, fast. So yeah. I, was at, I, was at Clive, I was at Clive Davis's party on Saturday night, and I go in the bathroom, and, and standing in front of the mirror with, with a, a woman, just a random person in the bathroom behind her, is Mariah Carey. And I did a double take. Like, this can't possibly be Mariah right. Carey in the same bathroom moment. So <laughs> I go in the stall, like, right behind them. And, you know, while I'm in there, I'm, of course, listening to everything. And I hear Mariah say to this woman, like, oh, my God, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for zipping up my dress. Trust me, everybody's going to be happy that it's actually zipped up. And I just thought that was just hilarious that there, if, it, if I had been in there 30 seconds earlier, she may have asked me to help her zip up her dress. But, Man! You know, there, 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 was, there was Mariah, <laughs> you know, with three random people. <laughs> You had, a, you, had a, you had a Miley moment with Mariah I Carey? I did. You had I a Miley that was moment. so cute. Yeah. That was so cute. And I'm so happy for Miley. She deserved those Grammys years ago. But, hey, at least at least now she's got a couple that and she can, can brag about. And can we all agree that the hair was probably in part maybe her doing, but also because she was paying, like, homage to Tina Turner last night? Yes. Like, I yes. mean, it yes. had to do with that, too, right? It wasn't just. I think it was. I think no, it was a th- stylist approach to that as well. I agree because, you know, she did a little bit of like a Proud Mary style yes. thing at the end of Flowers. Yes. And in her in her pre-packaged thing that they showed, she talked about, you know, the people that she wants to be like and, you know, mentioned, you know, Patti LaBelle and her godmother, Dolly Parton, and, of course, Tina, Tina Turner. Right. So, yeah, I think that was yeah. deliberate. Um, and, hey, you know, her last album, not not the, not the one that Flowers is on, but the one a couple of years ago, was very 80s influenced, too. So For sure. I think Miley also has a bit of, you know, 80s rocker chick in her that she likes to bring out, and that was just a fantastic performance as well and I, I knew her speech would not disappoint and it did not it did not <laughs> melissa Ruggieri, national music writer usa today you can find her work there thank you so much for joining us and giving us a recap of your grammy experience thanks guys always a pleasure